Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the uh, regular meeting of the Ojai Historic Preservation Commission for January 12, 2017. Uh, roll call, Mr. Winokur. Chair McCready. Here. Vice Chair Aikens. Yes, here. Commissioner Convery. Here. Commissioner James. Here. Commissioner Quinn. Here. Uh, the, uh, we do expect Commissioner Vogue this evening, and the uh, minutes will indicate that Commissioner Hill has an excused absence. Thank you. Uh, please rise uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Thank you. Members of the public wishing to address the Historic Preservation Commission on items appearing on the agenda are requested to complete a speaker's card and file it with the secretary prior to the start of the Historic Preservation Commission meeting. Cards are available in this council chamber's lobby. All comments should be limited to three minutes unless additional time is granted by the chair. Speakers should state their name and address the for the record and must direct their comments to the chair, not the audience or press. While the Historic Preservation Commission is in session, members of the commission sta com city staff and members of the audience are expected to maintain order and decorum and to obey the orders of the chair. With that, I'll turn the floor over to Museum Representative Mark Lewis for your monthly infomercial. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Lewis. That's report. Thank you, Chairman McCready. Uh, and our monthly report begins with we just opened our current exhibition, uh, Inventing Ojai, which is all about uh, why Edward Libby did what he did here a hundred years ago this year uh, and why it still matters. And uh, we urge everyone who hasn't had a chance to see it to come and see it. We'll be up through April 9th. And uh, in connection with that, I'm going to do a town talk on February 12th uh, arising, uh, on a subject arising out of that exhibit, which is the, uh, how Ojai was uh, a precedent and an inspiration for Santa Barbara in terms of the uh, mission revival slash Spanish revival makeover. Um, so that will be on February 12th. Uh, a week earlier on uh, February 4th, we will be uh, having our uh, annual Mystery at the Museum event. It's a fundraiser, but it's a lot of fun. People come and we give them clues and they solve the mystery. And uh, going further ahead, uh, and I'll be repeating this month after month, but April 8th, this is not a museum event, we're kind of making it happen. It's a community-wide event. That is the day we celebrate the centennial of the uh, Libby makeover. That's when they changed the name from Nordoff to Ojai and completed the, uh, what you might call phase one of what he did, which is the park, the tower, post office tower, and the arcade. And he handed the deed to um, Sherman Thatcher on behalf of the newly formed Ojai Civic Association. So April 8th, we're gonna recreate that basically and have another party in the park for the whole community. Uh, that's a Saturday, so we hope everyone will uh, come to that, and I'll be back in a month with more details about that. Thank you very much. That sounds like a lot of fun. You bet. Thank you so much. Excuse me, what time is the presentation on the 12th, on February 12th? 4.30 to 6. Four <laughs> Commissioner Aikens? And we have a relative in the office, so, or in the uh, group, to Mr. Thatcher. Tony, would you tell us how you're related to Sherman? I'm his grandson. Great, thank you. Uh, minutes of the December 8th, 2016 regular meeting. Any comments, corrections, or changes to the record from commissioners? I did not attend that meeting, so I will not participate in this. Mr. Chairman, we did receive uh, a request from Commissioner Vogue for a couple of um, modifications or corrections. On page three, um, he would like, and I expect, I like to say, I expected him here this evening, so uh, I don't want to misrepresent um, the minutes, but on page three, um, he wanted a modification where it says, Anthony Vogue, not as a commissioner, speaking on behalf of himself, spoke in opposition to the process and the project. Um, he would like the following added, contending that the HPC did not have jurisdiction to approve the project and such approval violated the provisions of the Mills Act contract covering the property. 
Um, staff does not have an objection to that modification. On page six, he asks that the following sentence, um, after the sentence requested the commission be provided with an information binder on city landmarks, he requested the following sentence. Mr. Winnegar indicated that there was such a binder or ha handbook available. Um, in fact, I wasn't aware that there was such a, a handbook. So um, I think if we were modified to indicate that, Mr. Winnegar indicated that he would follow up on that matter, that would be acceptable. Um, and then on page six, um, he requested that the sentence request, requested the landmark um, list on the website be replaced with a list that has non-pertinent information. Um, he requested that sentence be struck and substitute inquired as the status of the landmark list corrections and was advised by Mr. Winnegar that no work had been done on the matter by reason of the press of other work. And that's acceptable to staff as well. Thank you. Were those, those were all the changes I thought. Those, yes, so he requested three, and we are suggesting that you honor the two that I mentioned. Thank you. Commissioners, changes to the, do I have a motion? I have a motion that we, quit, that we approve the minutes as um, just, Mr. As modified, Winter, just yes. um, modified. I second that. Commissioner Akins. Uh, I abstained. I wasn't here last week, but I did watch uh, the meeting. Um, I guess I was just curious. There was a request by Commissioner Fogg, or maybe not a request, that the list be replaced, that it have non pertinent information re removed. That's what he And there was a motion to add a discussion item to the next agenda, but I didn't see where that was approved by the commission. And it has since been stripped down to bare necessities, which I personally find objectionable. Um, uh, Vice Chairman Akins, at a previous meeting, we did uh, present that list. Right. And there was um, information that uh, we agreed, um, that staff agreed was perhaps um, um, more disclosure than was necessary. It included information regarding the property owners uh, that uh, included contact information. We felt that that wasn't appropriate necessarily to be displayed on the publicly available information. We still maintain that information for staff contact purposes, uh, but the the information on the web, you're, as you indicated, has been corrected to uh, just indicate the the number, of the landmark, its location, uh, its its name, and the um, uh, the uh, designer where, where that was known. Uh, so we did strip out the more uh, delicate information from that, and I believe that the commission did review that previously. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So we have a motion and a second. I have a second. Mr. Winnegar? I'm sorry. <laughs> um, all those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Okay, just ne needs to be noted that I wasn't here, so I abstained. Okay. So I think my sidekick wasn't here either. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. With that, I'll open the public comment period. Uh, John Merck. Hi, I'm John Merck. Uh, I live at 1018 Sunset Place in Ohio. I'm a planning commissioner and uh, we had an item on our agenda at the last meeting, 402 North Blanche. Uh, Mr. McCready was the architect on that. Uh, we voted to approve the project, which means basically tearing down the existing building. And since then, we've received a number of emails from people saying, oh my God, how could you do this? It's a historic building. And as a commissioner, I'm a little um, conflicted because we don't really have any basis for saying, you can't tear this building down. It's, it was, uh, they did a historic building report by Rincon Associates and it was kind of inconclusive. It said, you know, it is historic, but it's not something that needs to be preserved. Um, I would love to get some feedback from the commission here. And uh, if you all want to come to our meeting next Wednesday, where it's going to be on our consent agenda and we're going to have a second chance to sort of look at it. And I just am curious about how strongly the Historic Preservation Commission might feel about 
preserving, this is a building that was built in the 1920s. It's a pretty well executed example of the Spanish Revival style. And, um, you know, we, we felt that the new building is going to be in the same sort of style. It's going to be nice, but um, a lot of people seem to think that we should go to greater lengths to, to keep the historic building there. So I would just welcome any comments that you have about um, um, Yeah, I have a comment. Thing. I'd like to know the backgrounds of the people who wrote. Were they architects? Were they engineers? No, were they mostly, people uh, with historic uh, backgrounds? Just you know? people in the neighborhood. And sort of because thing. when, you know, if it's not a designated historic building, then it was built at a certain time, but maybe it doesn't have architectural details that make it special, that kind of thing. And I am familiar with the project. I think that particular building is really compromised. The foundation's compromised, the windows, the walls. Um, restoring it would cost as much as building a new home, and it, it's not architecturally significant. So, you know, those are all questions I think that the owner really deeply considered, respectfully considered, and I've seen the new design and it does fit with the neighborhood. So I think those are the responses that need to go out to the neighborhood. Yeah, that's and it hasn't been designated, and it's, it's not architecturally significant. It didn't have a, an architect, it yeah. didn't have any elements that are particular to the neighborhood other than yeah. four that, walls. That's basically the conclusion we came to. Yeah. Right? So who was the architect that? I don't think there was an architect. There was no particular. It was, it was probably built. just an owner builder at that yeah. time yeah. in that neighborhood. Yeah, there was know. no record was of it a famous architect. It would have been $1,000 to build that house. <laughs> yeah. I think my grandmother built the house like Anyway, that. I thought I'd bring it to your attention in case you guys were interested in it. Thank you. Commissioner Aikens. Um, Commissioner Merck. Uh, actually, that we are, as one of our agenda items, going to be talking, to, we have a term sheet that we're going to be reviewing. And so I've uh, received input from elsewhere and from people who are concerned about the fact that we're tearing down a 1926 building with no review by the Historic Preservation Commission, even though there was a historic resources report done. Uh, the feeling is by several people outside there in the community that if a historic resources report was requested and required, that that would be an indication that the Historic Preservation Commission should in some way touch the project before it's torn, torn down. And I, I, uh, I, I had heard about this, and again, I watched uh, the commission. I read the, uh, the notes. I saw that one, one of your people had raised that issue. Why isn't this going before the HPC? And it just seems uh, counter the fact that we have a 90-year-old building that's basically basically going to be leveled without review by the uh, knowing that it's not a designated landmark, knowing that it's not even on our sites of merit, which we'll discuss later. But a still, a 90-year-old building in the heart of Ojai that's going to be leveled with no review outside the Planning Commission. Yeah. yeah, it's a real dilemma for us on the Planning Commission because we don't have any any legal basis or anything where you can say, oh, you can't tear this down, it's a historic building. But I, I agree, and so one of the suggestions, and I'm of, sorry. The, 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 the report that was done was kind of inconclusive. It didn't say it's, it's historic, but it's not like a landmark or anything like that that we have to say. Did it have any historical significance outside of the architecture? No, that's the thing that nobody famous lived in it. It wasn't owned by anybody famous or anything that that they could come up with so it, it, yeah. except for it was it it is a, a period piece of the time it's a, it's a very nice i mean building. again it's built on the spanish revival type i'm not an architect yeah. i have my silent friend next to me um so uh again the suggestion that's been made when we go through our term sheet later tonight that if a historical report is done then it probably makes sense for by that designation and that requirement that it come before the Historic Preservation Commission, just so we can ask our own questions and not assume anything. Exactly. Yeah, and that would make us more comfortable on the Planning Commission. Absolutely. And, and we do appreciate that the Planning Commission is very sensitive to historical structures throughout the valley. And uh, the fact that you came here and expressed that concern, we appreciate very much. Thank yeah, you. It's my pleasure. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. I think. <laughs> Uh, public hearing item number two, uh, work permit WP-1604. Mr. Winnegar. Thank you, and again, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. 
sorry. Uh, this is a request for a work permit to allow the installation of two new gates uh, and to um, uh, repaint and, and enhance the, the um, integrity of the uh, entrance uh, arch uh, that's all related to um, historic landmark number seven, the Ojai Valley Museum, which is located at 130 West Ojai Avenue. Uh, you have in your staff report the proposed modifications that are being sought. <coughs> uh, they relate to both uh, structural modifications of the arch um, and uh, gates which are intended to provide better security uh, for the courtyard and the entrance to the, um, to the museum to prevent uh, vandalism from occurring. Uh, there are two uh, entrances into the uh, front courtyard, one from uh, Ojai Avenue uh, and the other from Blanche Street. Uh, and uh, your staff report includes the design uh, for those gates. I also have larger uh, illustrations here if anyone's interested in them. The gates themselves will not be attached to the existing wall, but they'll be attached to a grade beam that basically abuts the, the wall. So there will be no uh, impact on, structural impact on the wall itself. Also um, included in the request is um, modifications to the archway uh, and the uh, adjacent the wall to improve its integrity uh, and prevent deterioration, as well as um, some uh, additions of uh, trees and uh, landscape materials uh, to the uh, courtyard area. Um, your uh, a uh, historic resources report was um, was requested and prepared. Um, that is included in your staff report along with illustrations of the existing conditions and uh, plans that show the proposed modifications. Um, and staff recommends uh, approval of the uh, requested work uh, permit modifications. And uh, the applicants are represented here this evening. So if you have any questions of staff or the applicants, we'll try and answer those. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Uh, do you, any of the commissioners have any questions or comments, or do we want to hear from the applicant first, prior? Can I just make one comment? Commissioner Akins? Um, again, the question was asked me when I sat down this morning. I, as people may know, I am a uh, nine-year board of trustee with the Ojai Valley Museum. I am the treasurer with the Ojai Valley Museum. When I came on the um, Historic Preservation Commission, uh, several years ago, we asked the attorney at that time whether there would, would be any kind of conflict of interest because of holding those two seats and being on the Historic Preservation Commission. And as I was joking with Thais, I paid to be on the museum board. <laughs> I don't get any financial benefit from that. So, um, so when this item was discussed at the uh, Board of Trustees um, meeting, uh, I abstained from that. I just listened, and I did not participate in the vote. And the uh, just to try to be a little cleaner, and the, ask that the minutes reflect that. Thank you, uh, Vice Chairman Aikens. The minutes will reflect uh, that discussion. Uh, Mr. Lochner, do you want to give a brief description of the designs? Um, <clears throat> Please introduce yourself. Sure, uh, I'm Douglas Lochner. I live in Oakview here in the valley and uh, I, my, I'm an artist. I work primarily in public art, so this is in my wheelhouse. Uh, the designs th for the gates are based on uh, research that I did relative to the period of the building and the, uh, which is essentially the Art Nouveau movement and also the museum's desire to have gates that were iconic to the facility's current use versus its original use as a church. Um, in coming up with this design, and, and I can hold this up if you'd like, um, the, the central front gate is more conservative <coughs> than the side gate, and it's really designed to impart a feeling of knowledge and you know symbolism of knowledge and and growth is uh, your report also indicated from the historian that it's it's sort of uh, indicative of a native plant that can be found out in the back country that the Chumash used 
the side gate is a little bit more fun and again uh, designed to be symbolic of a museum as a place that you would go to discover new things and sort of playful and joyous. Um, both of them are in keeping with the Art Nouveau movement uh, from a historic perspective. The report also validates that. And, um, you know, we took great care to design the implementation as it was explained so it wouldn't impact any of the original walls or because they couldn't hold it up. They're, they're not that structural. And uh, with that, if you, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. I have a question. The Art Nouveau period went from the 1890s to the 1920s approximately? Or? Uh, yeah, it was the early 1900s essentially. Early 1900s, because this, it looks kind of like this is Mission Revival, the, the museum. Or, or the museum, yeah. So, you know, when you get into this whole architectural uh, quandary that you guys are faced with every day, you know, when it, it boils down to um, the only native architecture to this valley is Chumash. I mean, there is none of it left right other than maybe some rock paintings around so so you get all these influences that came into california mission revival was brought really by libby as a way of branding this town it, it wasn't necessarily indicative so the history of ojai from an architectural standpoint is somewhat muddy because it in my understanding because uh libby came in and made it his right so what you're really trying to do is, is create, to keep that vision, is my understanding, um, and this falls within that from a period standpoint and also uh, from Libby's embracing of the arts. So that, that is why it harkens, in my view, to the, um, the Art Nouveau versus a classic, mm -hmm. uh, mission revival which would be a european type forged iron and really the front gate is sort of a blending of the two it's it's very it could be very easily uh done in in a mission style in that the side gate not so much the side gate's more leaning toward the art nouveau part of it um did, uh, i just had it did you submit other designs as well were there other gate designs um, to the museum, I had provided cla what I would consider classic designs, but I actually um, encouraged them not to go with those because they're they're not appropriate. They're you know I mean you don't want this again. I think it's very important that this, especially with the historic significance of this in relative to downtown that this be an iconic building, that it is an iconic building, and that the gate reflect that, and that it has a stature that reflects that, versus, you know, this, the classic way of doing this would be Perusian scrolls. What, and there's what did you say, Perusian? What, Perusian scrolls. What that, are those? I was curious. I didn't know. Um, the hotel. Oh, okay. I mean, I they're, you know, they're nice. just squirrely scrolls, and it's not. Some of them are. Yeah. It's not um, really... It's more in the period of the revival, though, right? Yeah, I think you can argue that fact, mm -hmm. as the historian said. I mean, if you, if you get down to the, the history of it, you know, the revival, um, in this case, he was embracing a theme um, in this his interpretation or this interpretation of the Spanish architecture. So you can probably speak to this. The one thing I wanted to point out is that the Please secretary, introduce yourself. I'm sorry, Wendy Barker. I'm the director, executive director of the Ohio Valley Museum. Thank the you. Secretary of Interior Standards um, suggests that you make, when you make changes to a historic building that it's visible, that you can tell that this is an addition and not part of the original structure. That's one thing that I like about this design is it doesn't touch the structure. I think for most people it's 
going to be somewhat obvious that this is a later edition and was not the 1918. <coughs> I, to me, I think that's a good thing. Um, one of the reasons, obviously, we're doing this is because for security reasons, but also because we want to point out to people driving by, walking by, that this is a issue of um, adaptive reduce and that it's not a church anymore. We're a museum. We want people to visit us. But if you're new to town or if you're just traveling in, you're coming, you drive by, you think it's a church. And people don't normally go visit a church. So we're trying to give them a visual clue that this is a creative place, a, a place for the community to come and visitors to come and, and visit. Thank you. With that, I will open it up to the commissioners for comments and questions. Commissioner Convery? Um, yeah, I, I have a couple of comments. You know, I had some previous comments, but based on what you've just said, I understand what you're trying to accomplish, Wendy, with the gate and uh, announcing that it's a museum, but I have a, a big hesitation about making the gate a marketing technique to bring people in. You know, it's it shouldn't be that. If, if it's an artistic statement, per, you know, it's maybe a sculpture in the garden or something along those lines. And the Secretary of Interior, you know, the building is in the National Register, just like the Libby House. And that uh, owner of the Libby House has been held to such a standard of keeping it integrated into old and new so that it's very much of a piece, so that in 10 years somebody doesn't come by and say, what, what the heck is that? You know, how does that fit in? So um, I looked at all the, Cal I've been to all the California missions, to tell you the truth, and I looked at all the pictures again. I have a picture of San, San Buenaventura, which has a, I think the only iron gate. All the other missions always had wooden gates because that was the resource they had. When Libby designed with Meet and Rec with the downtown, they made it all integrated of a piece because that was what he learned in the Chicago World's Fair is about you know integration beautiful places and a kind of a, a theme so they really did a fantastic job making that building look like a 1700s mission you can't tell the difference between that and the other California missions um, the gate that's there the wooden gate which is the front door the river of life Almost every mission had that because they were, in theory, a day's ride, you know, up and down the Camino Real. And the river of life means shelter. It means water. You can get water here. You know, so that message is on every gate, on every door when you enter those buildings, you know. And it's interesting about this museum versus church thing because the missions are now museums, like Mission San Miguel. People visit them as they visit museums, not as they visit churches. So that's sort of, you know, just a dilemma to, to ponder on all of this. Um, you know, the other comment that I had about the Art Nouveau situation, I live in a Tudor house. Frankly, I don't know of any Art Nouveau houses in Ojai. There's a couple downtown, actually. There's one, I think, on Blanche, kind of. Well, it's a 30s. It's an Art Deco. It wasn't, inclu it wasn't included in the historical context. No, no. That. But I'm just saying Art Nouveau isn't a, uh, an architectural style that made it here. It was mm -hmm. more of a Beverly Hills thing. And it's a Newport. It's really a Newport, Rhode Island. That's where Ar Art Nouveau really was born. And that's where it lives. Um, California was more Spanish. So you know, saying it's of the period is kind of a conflict. I have a Tudor house. I lived in a craftsman house, which actually Tony's grandmother built, the Robertson house. And if I took those craftsman elements, like that fireplace, and well, the fireplace might work, but if I put them in my Tudor house, they would be, you know, they wouldn't, they wouldn't work. They're they would be, period. yeah, it would be a big conflict. So I, I see the gate as the um, Art Nouveau as a conflict rather than a, an enhancement or a statement piece. And then I'm looking at the El Roblar Hotel or, you know, Sheila Clough's The Oaks. And she she redid that in, in late 90s, I think. I don't know. I don't know if you're here. But, you know, they redid the whole hotel probably around 98 or 99. And they built the wall, the courtyard wall, in keeping with the museum wall. They just made it all of a piece so that the downtown is very cohesive. You know, they did a a really nice job and made it all integrated and seamless. And I think people 
immediately think that's a hotel, you know, but it even, it looks very much like the, the Mission Museum. So I think the conversation for me is more about integrating the gates into the structure rather than creating a statement that might not stand the test of time. Isn't it Commissioner true, James? Isn't it true, according to the National Register, that when you do have a period piece, you have to continue in that period, or is there an exception anybody knows of? Well, I, th I think the applicant's uh, correct that there is, there is a desire to make it clear what is original and what is not original. Um, but <clears throat> I think uh, a little bit familiarize myself with your work a little bit. And uh, I can see from the materials in the presentation that you put a lot of thought into it. I, I think I concur with Commissioner Convery that it, for me it would need to be a lot more traditional, a lot more in keeping with the architecture. And uh, I just think that this is such an important landmark that you, know, you don't want to scare the horses. And uh, so I think that I would, would like to have seen the more conservative schemes. I I, actually, I wanted to follow up on that, you know, because we've been, not we, but the entire Ojai Preservation Commission over the years have been real sticklers about the Libby House signs in the arcade, you know, it's been very strict. And I think this would set a really difficult precedent with these unusual gates for people coming forward. I mean, I think it would give Ramin Shamshuri grounds to sue <laughs> us, <laughs> or the whole city, yeah, you know, because it's such a, a departure from what our message has been. Oh, I think and I th the other thing I'd like to say is the museum has been a great partner yeah. with the commission over the years and a great partner in preservation. And so um, we really respect, you know, the, uh, the work that you do and always keeping us informed. And so um, I think... Commissioner Quinn, you wanted to say something? Well, I'd just like to say that I'm, I'm totally in agreement. As I looked up um, the, the gates that would go with uh, Mission and Revival, they just seem so much more in keeping with the building. And I do understand, Director, um, what you're saying about it looking like a church, but I really don't feel it does look so much like a church. But, of course, this cross up on the top doesn't really helped you know? <laughs> but I don't think most people see that cross uh, and and redoing the sign on the front I think is going to call more attention to it too but I really um, it's I, I'm just these the gates are too different to me and and I appreciate your work in doing it and your design and your artistic ability and so on but to me, I, I just don't think it belongs in that museum. Well, in art and art history, there's period pieces. And, and then for something to be part of a period, you have to have things that, that go with that period. And, and Art Nouveau is beautiful. I love the art, but I don't think it's part of that period. So, Commissioner Aikens? Uh, just a quick question. One of the things that was highlighted in the uh, materials that were presented to us was the link to the Chumash people. And can you talk about that a little bit, please? Uh, again, it, <clears throat> the front gate was stylized on a native plant, a root that was used by the Chumash. Um, and it's also a symbol of growth and, and knowledge, two things that they you know, embraced. Um, and to answer your comments, um, I don't see the gates as gates. I see them as sculpture. I see this as public art. I don't do gates. I do sculptures. So these are indicatives of sculptures. That's what I thought I was retained to do. If you want something that is, you know, as you were saying, that matches historically with missions, you put up wood gates, which are foreboding and not very welcoming. and would um, not achieve any of the things that they had on their list, which was to have the, and the, the police also uh, requested that the courtyard be open and visible, which you won't get through a large wooden gate. I don't think we're trying to no. copy missions, we're trying to yeah. copy the mission revival style, yeah, and which is. I don't think they should be wood, but I mean, here's a picture of a, an iron gate with a yeah. floral motif that is in an old brick archway. Yeah, I mean, you've seen this stuff, but. Yeah, um, I mean, this is um, it's just more of a, a you know it is an art piece and as a sculpture and those as are, a those are cast um, those are cast 
it's just a Google image, but it's in an older brick archway and it fills oh, yeah, the I entire understand. arch. But I, it is, a, what you've done is a, an art piece, you know, and it is, as a sculpture, it's, it's interesting and different and it does reflect too much history, but as a gate on the building, it, you know, I don't know that it, I don't think it works right. with the building. Well, I mean, it's, you know, y you guys can debate this. The, the, just so that you understand, though, the thing that you're shorting to, I mean, those are cast elements that came from Europe. There's, there's mm -hmm. nothing historically accurate about those. You know, there, it's, it, it, it's up to you what's, what Ojai wants to do relative to this landmark, but I think it's really a travesty if you go with something as simple as that kind of a gate. It, it's just, you know, you can go buy that out of a catalog it's it's really um yeah and i don't think we're suggesting that and i th and as i said before the mu museum has been such a great partner with us and uh and we have uh you kept us informed all along about that the gates were uh, something that you were looking at and you contacted the police so we're aware of all those uh those factors here well and can i point out just to make sure everybody also realizes that the city council um, appropriated twenty thousand dollars for gates that were works of art, and it was before my time. But that's the terminology that I always heard was that are works of art, and that's what Doug has produced for us. So, thank you, if I could. Commissioner Quinn. Um, I'm not objecting to it being a work of art. I just like to see it a little more represent the. Um, Mission revival style, but and and I don't think she brought this here and say, well, we could just have these gates, but just the style, um, but but as a work of art is is what I would recommend. And like you're mentioning that that you see these gates as not as gates but as sculpture. Well, I could see something like this representing the shoe mash um, in the courtyard, but not as the entryway in in my opinion and i think m most people going by would not recognize the um connection and would think wonder why they have a onion on their front gate you know i that's what I, when i first looked at it that's what i thought it's an onion then i read it and i thought oh that's nice and everything but so that's just that's my opinion <laughs> yeah i appreciate that and you know and not to to keep going back and forth but I love the onion. I love the idea of an onion. I love the idea that, as the museum is, that the further you get into it, you peel back more layers of mm -hmm. things. To me, that's, that's the wonder of it all. And I think it's fabulous that people would drive by and go, wow, what is that? And instead of, oh, you know. So um, that was intentional. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments from commissioners? <clears throat> I, I would like to see the applicant come back with more conservative schemes that are more in keeping with the architecture and the landmark. And I understand that it's uh, seen as a piece of art, and I think you can achieve that. I know you're highly qualified, and uh, I think from the comments here tonight, you see we're kind of a, when it comes to uh, making changes to a landmark, kind of hewing closely to the style and the, the feeling of the time of that landmark i would i would move us to, uh, move have s entertain a motion to continue and have the applicant come back um yeah, I, make a motion. Oops, sorry. I turned it off I'm, i'd like to make a motion to see some more uh mission revival style gates i second that motion mr winnegar uh, yeah, I, yes. 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 I am at a quandary because the question is, would we like them to come back with a other designs? And if I were to vote no, that would infer that I like the status quo. And I'm not, can't work with the status quo, so I am going to abstain. Okay. Uh, Chairman Green. Yes. Motion carries. Um, I would ask the applicant how much time he would like to uh, request so we can use for day certain, or if they'd rather continue on calendar. Uh, so uh, so 
sure. <laughs> we meet once a month, and warning you, <laughs> only. Thank you. Thank you. We will, um, uh, my suggestion is that we would uh, take continuous off calendar and re notice for if it, it, indeed they want two months. We'll go ahead and re notice. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> Item three the uh, Changes to the Historic Preservation Ordinance. Uh, these are being returned to us by uh, Council with comments to the HPC recommendations. Mr. Winokur? Yeah, sure. um, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission, uh, before you uh, is once again um, a term sheet um, for your consideration of uh, potential changes to the Historic Preservation Ordinance. Uh, early last year, the uh, Historic Preservation Commission made recommendation to City Council uh, for a whole uh, host of uh, amendments to the existing Historic Preservation Ordinance. Um, most of those are minor in nature. Uh, there were some that had uh, substantive changes um, and uh, the City Council, uh, when they considered your recommendation in October, uh, directed the City Attorney and Planning Staff to, um, to uh, put together a spreadsheet, if you will, that sort of uh, pre presented um, in more clear terms what the intent was behind those ch recommended changes. Uh, they also asked that the issue of the Sites of Merit be uh, bifurcated from the rest of the ordinance so that it could be considered uh, independently of the other uh, changes. So what we have attempted to do here is put together for your consideration the spreadsheet which enumerates all the changes that were, that were recommended by the, um, by the Commission previously. Uh, there's actually two term sheets, one for the, the bulk of the ordinance changes, and then the last couple of pages relate specifically to uh, the, um, the sites of merit issue. Um, in fact, it's just, yes, it's the last uh, two pages uh, back and forth, um, front and back, rather. Uh, staff has not made any additional, we're not making any further recommendations for changes. Uh, what we're really here tonight is seeking your validation of the, uh, the justifications that are being enumerated here uh, as the background for the changes. Um, if the commission wishes to make any additional changes, uh, certainly that can be uh, forwarded to the, uh, to the city council as well. Uh, but as I indicated, we're not really, rec staff is not any, at any rate recommending any changes. Um, for the record, I should indicate that Commissioner Vogue uh, did uh, previously present um, an email, and I think written materials on, um, on changes that he was suggesting, uh, as well as a whole um, philosophical uh, argument as to the approach that was being taken here. Uh, I'm not going to represent those in any way, shape, or form this evening. Uh, it's really up to Commissioner Vogue uh, to do that um, on his own, and, and you have, I think, communications previously in that regard. Uh, I should also note for the record that um, uh, on the last item, Commissioner Hill uh, supported the, uh, the recommended uh, proposal. I, I will, with your permission, I'll add that to the, um, to, to the minutes as well. But at any rate, with respect to the, um, to the term sheet that's before you this evening, uh, what, again, we're looking for is your validation of the, um, of the information that's presented here, and to including the uh, purpose and intent behind the various changes. Um, so with that, I'd open it up for uh, any questions that you may have of me or your discussion uh, on the, the background. Thank you, Mr. Winnegar. Uh, I'll start, um, unless any, someone else wants to cut me off. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Uh, starting with section 4-8.15 uh, permits for work affecting landmarks and this continues on to um, what page is that darling? Uh, that's page 15 of 27 uh, in various places starting there and going through 4.818 I believe it is mm -hmm. the okay. phrase uh, visible from the public right away has been inserted and that presents uh, some serious problems uh, for me as a. Tell me where you are, what page you're on exactly? 15. And it's at the bottom of page 15? That's where, that's where the sort of area starts. Starting with 8.15. Page, page, page 16 at the top paragraph, it continues, and you can see second line down non landmark structure on the same parcel as a landmark that is visible from the public right away. I mean, if that's, if that's the measure, I mean, there are a lot of changes that could be made to a landmark that would never come before us. And that's a problem. That's pretty typical in most cities, isn't it? That it has no. to be no, no. visible to, no the, way. No. to the public? No. Character. So that occurs there, item B in that section. 4.816, it occurs again. That fr it's that phrase, visible from the public right away. And so uh, that's a problem for me. I don't think that was in the, our, our suggestions to council. So, Commissioner Akins? Just, just a clarification, because I think maybe you're too, talking about different things. So. So the, the question that was raised with me was that we eliminate, that we not narrow it to just items that are visible. So you're talking about somebody would make a change to the back of the property that's not covered by that. Is that what you're talking about? Are you talking about such as, we'll use a nice example, such as the uh, uh, Palomar home there at Palomar and Foothill where they've built the wall and, and you can no longer see that? Or are you talking about that kind of visibility? Because I think I just Commissioner that, James was talking about that. I thought things behind, I thought the rule was that things behind your house that you couldn't see or the back of the house. I think what no, they're talking what about, talking physical, about. visible to the public, you came to my house at 718 Foothill Road, the interior is not visible to the public. Yeah, the so according to this, you could rip out all the old growth fur, take out all the light fixtures, change all the doors, and rip out the floors. You know, totally ruin, or right. in my opinion, right. the interior of a, of a historic home, like the Gamble House in Pasadena. I think that's what you're getting at. It's not visible to the public. They, don't they say sometimes the interior is ap applicable to the historical significance and sometimes it isn't? Is well, that's correct, but then if it's not applicable to the historic significance, then it probably wasn't landmarked. Oh, sometimes okay. we landmark just the shell and not the interior and in that case i can understand this but um and it, you know it goes to other structures that are on the same parcel or property as the landmark um you know it, i think it states in here that they they should have come before the commission only if they're visible from the public right away that that's not the standard the standard is that if they're visible from any place where the landmark is visible or from the landmark. Mr. Winnegar? Mr. Chairman, um, I, wasn't, I didn't participate in the, um, the subcommittee, uh, except for the very last meeting, uh, the subcommittee's efforts on this. But I just want to, and uh, again, I'm, I'm not your attorney, um, and I don't know if Mr. Summers would have the same, um, the same opinion, but based on my experience, I would say that the way I read this provision, and I don't know if it was the intent or not, it doesn't talk about the elements that are visible to the, to the, from the public street. It's talking about a landmark that's visible from the public street. The way I would interpret this is it doesn't matter what you're, in fact, it includes buildings that aren't even under the landmark status. So the way I would interpret that is if you want to do any exterior modifications, whether it's to a, an element of the structure that's not visible or, 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 or whether it is, it would, have to, it would trigger this requirement for the work permit. So I just want to be clear, it isn't, the way I read this, it isn't just those elements that are visible to the, from the public street. It applies to a landmark that is visible. 
you're saying cool. if it's been officially landmark, then no matter where it is, it, you need to. Is that what you're saying, Mr. McCready? I'm sorry, but you didn't clarify that, okay. that for me. <laughs> okay, if, if, I, if I could direct your attention. What, what, I'd like to hear Mr. Winnegar for a second. Um, if I could direct your attention to the bottom of page 15 of 27. Got it. As proposed, major work on uh, the the, uh, the first bullet point mm -hmm. in the uh, middle column there. As proposed, major work permits would be approved by the commission for any exterior work on any landmark, any landmark. or any non-landmark structure on the same parcel. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make reference to elevations or components of, of a structure. It says any work on a landmark or a non-landmark structure. Why would it, why would it be? Then it says that is visible from the public right of way. Right. So, so it narrowly uh, focuses okay. it again. I, I just wanted, Am I misunderstanding I just wanted, that? My, my point here is that I think it's open to interpretation as to what the true intent here is. So you may want to be clear about what your intent is. Are you talking about just those elements that are visible from the public right away? Or are you talking about the entire property that is just because it happens to be visible from the public right away? Commissioner Quinn? Okay, you, um, you remember we, I came before this board as a, an applicant uh, last year. And we had this discussion at that time at, where I brought in the state guidelines which say that what is not visible from the public street is not is you can have a big swimming pool you can have a um, you know a multi-car garage on that property if it's not visible from the street so I'm not I mean to me this says that that all of them will have a, a permit which I believe is in conflict but I think you're thinking it's not restrictive enough so but the, the state guidelines are very clear that what's done out of the side of the public is. Um, I thought that was also National Register guidelines. I think well. it is, too. I, I know it's the state, and I think you're right on that. So, you know, because we had the discussion um, about that building that's on the back of my property, and at some point I do intend to change that building, and we all agreed that after looking at the state like guidelines that that, um, that that would be something I would need a you know work permit to do it, but yes. Perhaps uh, Councilman Haney could provide some. Councilman Haney. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to um, interject myself the way uh, Councilman Quinn did. Uh, I'm not going to go ahead. <laughs> uh, I refer to you guys as the experts, especially some of you that have a tremendous amount of knowledge. Um, I was just going to pull back into the same paragraph, um, if you start out as proposed work permits would be approved by the commission for any exterior work on a landmark or any lawn mat or any non-landmark structure. So that's talking to me about everything on the outside. And then the other question was, um, that Cynthia and Valerie were talking about was, what do we do with the interior? You know, do we have the right to just, um, you know, repair as needed or do whatever we want? And that's addressed actually here on the interior. Mm -hmm. So I was just trying to, I was going to point that out, that it is already mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. that it's both required permit. And that mm -hmm. if something is exceptional on the inside, it is um, identified so that you would have to maintain the integrity of that or have to get a work permit to enhance any aspect of that. If it's been that's identified. But if it's then, been I guess, identified. then I guess my question to Mr. Summers would be, what is the import of this phrase visible from the public right away? I don't know what that's telling me then. Well, I think that's a good question to know to take back, to get clarity. Yeah. Agreed. Because, I mean, you could argue that you could take the whole back of a building that no one can see and make it into yeah, see, whatever you want, that. you know? I that way. I read it that yeah. you see the building, guess what? That building has to be... Yeah, but if it's not now, visible to the public the right away, place. then, you know, I think you could go to the Supreme Court and keep arguing it all the way up one side. It's, tr it's challenging <laughs> language. I, I think if you lose it, we'll pass for that clarification. I yeah. think it's going to help you down. Yeah. It's going to help you down the road to make determinations. That's what this is all about. And in fact, I would in indicate on page 17 of 27 <coughs> in the uh, discussion there, um, 
we included, this is one of the key decision points for the commission and city council. Um, in the paragraph in the, in the bottom third of this uh, paragraph on page 17, this is one of the key decision points for the commission and the council as it governs which development projects are subject to the commission's review. Mm -hmm. So it very much is a policy decision on the part of the council. So I have a question, Thais. Do you have owning a landmark building and wanting to do repair and restoration in the back, I'm assuming is what you're saying, do you feel comfortable with this visible from the public right away business or do you think it's, it shouldn't even be here? It should just be treated as a landmark all the way around. I'm not talking about, I don't think putting in a swimming pool qualifies as changing a landmark. That's a ground, that's like gardening what landscape if it can design. It's seen from the public view though. It doesn't hit, it's, you're not doing anything to the building. So, well, like I'm saying there's a falling down building on the back of my property that yeah. um, would like to be fixed at but some point. But is it point. part of the landmark building no, or is it, it a, sh a gardening shed or no, something? No, it's, it's a garage, but um so it doesn't But I, exactly, yeah. that's yeah. that's my point. However, what this is is a major um work, right. Yeah. is on something when that that was built later than the the house was built and yeah. but it's on the same property. And it's visible from the street if you were like peering around right. and everything. Was, but was it built in the same style as the house? Probably. Oh no, not, not at all. My, and I my, my yeah. experience with that at 718 Foothill Road. So it was built in 1906. There was a carport garage right. thing added in the 70s. It was not included in the landmark status because it was a just, you know, a carport. Mm -hmm. So I was able to rework that without going through any Mills Act or landmark. Permitting, and I would imagine that that's the situation it's, you're in. No, because this says that you should have gotten a major work permit. It for wasn't your landmark. No, that piece of it's it not says part any of the or landmark. non-landmark structure on the same parcel. Well, that should so not be in should, there. So then. when you did your uh, yeah, that's what that's my point. Yeah, because it, you you know you fix the garage, it looks a thousand percent better. Um, but according to this, you would have had to get a major uh, work permit, work for permit and come market. before this board. So that's what I'm saying, that the state guidelines do not require that, and we shouldn't re be more restrictive but than then the state. On, on the other hand, Libby House, Ramin, is doing major work on a non-landmark section of his property, and yet he's had Came to come here us. to get approved. But it, so, but I, my understanding is that that parcel is landmarked, that where but he's the doing property, he's the property, the work. structure isn't. He's no. building a structure that's but not he's, Well, I think that this it's points up the confusion that we yeah. have around this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, um, can I interject something else too? Just to set this um, uh, issue, what I'm hearing only is before they had um, that attached garage or carport, mm -hmm. that they should have had a work permit ran through this commission as an addition to that site because they, if it's attached to that landmark site, that they would have had to have something that gives them the authority to do that. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Um, and, and again, I'm just hearing it. There's two uh, ways to Mills Act a property. You can Mills Act the, the house, right. and you can Mills Act the property. So it was right. the house, and it was never landmarked. It was just the house came under the Mills Act. So the property was separate. This is what I've discussed with the commission, and that was in 99 or something, whatever that was, 15, 20 years ago. So um, because the house was designated, the, the property and the grounds and the gardens and all of that were just treated as normal property. Right, and then that was entertaining to the second part was if you wanted to put a pool mm -hmm. in your backyard but the landscape was a part of your agreement, then you would have to come before this body mm -hmm. to, to ask for their permission to design and install a pool. You know, so, I, you know, a lot of these questions are, um, I think, are great questions, and I'm glad that you guys are... Would you have to be doing the pool in the 1906 style, or...? <laughs> well, again, that, that might... That it begs might the question. ...do the same thing as um, your, your conversation Gates. about these mm -hmm. gates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I thought your conversation was excellent mm -hmm. on that. So... I didn't yeah, know you, that. you could require that. You could say. Is there such a this. thing as, as a 1906 style pool? I don't. I don't know that much about pools. But well, the style is just the aesthetics. The There's castle. The yeah. 
I think it's the structure of the aesthetics on how you yeah. do the photos mm -hmm. or do copies or things yeah. like that. Yeah. That could be really pretty with old tiles and stuff. Mm -hmm. That would be neat, yeah. So I think the, the questions are revolving around this phrase. And mm -hmm. is it, does it mean you know, visible from the street or visible from the property, visible from the landmark? So maybe, uh, maybe, we're just, maybe I'm just reading it incorrectly. But. Well, I, as I said, I agree with uh, Councilman Haney's interpretation and the interpretations here. It applies basically to everything. So if you want to be more restrictive and have it only apply to those um, parts that are visible from the public street, I think that that's not what's communicated here. Uh, okay. So if you want to do that, I think that that would require a motion on your part to alter uh, the recommendation to council. I have another question. Mr. I've Conrad? never seen visible from the public right of way in any building codes, historic building codes. I haven't either. That's what I was saying. Where did this yeah. come from? Who put this in? Th and that's what I'm wondering. Where yeah, I think from? I think Commissioner Hill's the only remaining member that was involved in the subcommittee. <laughs> but that phrase came from us to council. It did. So seeing that in other codes that I've looked at in other cities. Um, maybe okay. maybe I can flesh it out a little bit. Um, since I also uh, ran uh, Chairman Vogue's or Commissioner Vogue's uh, information past Craig Walker, I know how Craig Walker, who was a member of the ad hoc committee, feels. Uh, he basically feels, and I, I know with uh, Commissioner Quinn, Craig was on the commission at that time. Uh, his thought is that what can be seen from the landmark needs to be in keeping with the landmark. And so that goes with the visibility that we're issuing. And I know he th feel strongly about that. It's in caps, caps on that page there someplace amongst my marks. Um, and so I'm guessing that that's where it originated from. Mm -hmm. uh, because again, w we had that discussion when we were determining whether to landmark uh, Commissioner Quinn's uh, Aliso mm -hmm. Adobe building. We also had a discussion. Uh, uh, we did the full gamut on that. We talked about uh, mm -hmm. whether we were going to landmark items that were inside. Uh, some more interesting than others, like the Murphy chairs. Chairs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and so we talked about that. We ended up uh, not landmarking anything inside, uh, kind of with the uh, with the understanding that the Quins were very much in support of keeping the Murphy bench. Um, we also discussed landmarking items outside of that. We talked about the olive trees that are out front mm -hmm. and whether they were to be landmarked. And eventually we determined that they had, were not as old as maybe some of the older ones in the valley and that they had pretty, one of them had pretty much been hacked up repeatedly, probably by someone like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we ended up, in, in that case, just a recent case, we ended up landmarking the building and the and the um, the character defining elements. I know that was. Can I move on to one weird, other so. thing that I want? If to I if oh, before okay, and maybe you, that's that may be the key uh, here is that um, if you're concerned about overreaching provisions of this of this section, it could be restricted to elements that are visible from the public right of way or public street, whatever the case may be, um, or other elements as enumerated and defined, the character defining elements in the landmark designation itself. Because it's been my experience, just limited experience here, is that in the case of the Libby House, there are much, it's a broad, it's very broad is what's the landmark elements are. In other cases, it's just the structure itself. It doesn't That's include right. the grounds. So in the case of Libby House, it would be my opinion that the, a pool would be subject to a major work permit uh, just because of the provisions, as I've read, that, that landmark uh, uh, requirements and the Mills Act requirements. So anyway, that's, that's something to consider. And so, Chairman, if I could just say. Uh, Commissioner Quinn. Thank you. Uh, that phrase actually is in the state guidelines, though. And so maybe Commissioner Hill was looking at them, the phrase visible from the streets. We were talking about where that phrase came from. And it, it is, I don't have it in front of me because I didn't know this question was going to come up, but it is specifically in the state guidelines. So are we, this is a discussion item, correct, uh, Mr. Winnegar? So it is. no action is required. No. So I'd like to have it entered into the record that we have questions about 
that phrase, and maybe we're over, over, over analyzing it. But I just want to be careful so that uh, we do cover it very well. And also, I skipped an item, and that was disclosure of site visits and ex parte context. But I just want to oh. make get that out there before I forget. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Akins. I'm leaving early, so I wanted to say something too. So, but real quick. Go right ahead. Okay, sorry. Commissioner James. Um, just the very first part, and this might help with everything we're talking about. It says adopt the Secretary of the Interior's um, standards for the treatment of historic properties. You know, which makes things easy because you have everything. But then I thought also to chain to also adopt the criteria. I wanted to add that to that, if that would be okay for the treatment, if it's for not the treatment, for, but for the the criteria for determining historic properties of the Secretary of the Interior, and that might also help uh, if you want to become a city of merit, that you have you know stronger um, standards for criteria of, of historic landmarks, et cetera. Anybody have any comment on that? <clears throat> Thank you. Commissioner Akins, you had a remark? Uh, well, actually, I had a few of them. Mike. Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, so having gone through this with former chair, vice chair Walker, and with current commissioner Vogue on either side of our thing, I, I mean, there were uh, items that um, they suggested, Commissioner Vogue suggested in his uh, email, I'm still puzzling over how we can get input through the email sent to the whole commission. That still troubles me that mm -hmm. I'm talking about something that isn't available to the public. Any thoughts on that, Mr. Winnegar? It's a very good point, um, Vice Chairman Aikens, and um, I believe that staff would be uh, obligated to provide copies of that um, that would be available to the public at least in in uh, copied form okay because yeah it seem it seems um, it seems troubling that with uh, you know if Commissioner Vogue was here were here we would be having a full discussion and and he would be presenting that himself but it's troubling to me that uh, I might represent a commissioner on a document that is not public in any way. It's only been presented to ourselves and staff and I think city management, so. Um, did you read the entire email and study it? Did, did I read Commissioner Vogue's email yes. and study it? Yes, it would okay, be. Okay, because I didn't and I don't know. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't actually think it's um, part of the picture. I think it was, it's his opinion. He sent it out and we're not considering it. He's not here. I think well, it should be I, set I, aside. Uh, well, again, and, and that is my question. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Summers is unable to be here because he's tied up with conflict in Sacramento. <coughs> so that's troubling that he's not able to be here when we yeah, might be asking true. these questions. Uh, uh, Community Development Director uh, Wald is out, I think, until the 18th, according to a voicemail that I listened to, and Commissioner Vogue is not here. And so, uh, again, you know, I agree with Commissioner Convery that... Um, yeah, I think you're, it was a good point for you to bring that up so that it doesn't come back to haunt us, but frankly, I didn't study it. I considered it an email that wasn't presented to the public, so I didn't know that it would come to bear on what we're talking about. He's not here. I think we should disallow it and yeah, set it aside. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, well, I, I, more importantly, you might think it as um, a form of a Brown Act violation because technically yeah. you're not allowed to interact with more than one or two other commissioners. Yeah, it's good. That's why I don't read them. Well, thank you, Councilman Haney. These are the questions that I've been asking and trying to get clarification from our legal counsel because we have been receiving emails to the full counts or full commission from Commissioner Vogue since Commissioner Vogue came online, and so I've asked that repeatedly. How can that take place when prior to that and in the last discussion we had, we were told we were told to refrain 
from con contacting other members of the commission. And in fact, as I said in an email tonight to, uh, to Mr. Summers, there was another item that I wanted to bring up, but I had already talked to one other commissioner, had another commissioner contact me, wanted to talk to the chair, but in doing that, I would have talked to only three people, but with me, that makes four. So I think we can really only talk to two people. Mm -hmm. And so, again, as I stated earlier, I have a problem with receiving emails with impertinent discussions that should take place so with the full Matthew public Summers had given me to permission to before to send emails to everybody. To yeah, well, I'm sorry, what? I'll bring that up to the city attorney and the city manager, and I would recommend in the future that if any of you have a concern or issue of that type, that you take it to your chair and let the chair bring it to the city manager's attention. Thank you. Okay. Um, but, I will, but I will bring this up um, regarding these activities. Okay, well, Matthew, Commissioner James, yes. Yeah, Matthew Summers previously, when I couldn't comment, told me that I could, even though I couldn't comment, I could send out an email to everyone regarding architectural things in Terramina. And so I did that per his okay. Is that uh, against, he didn't say it was against the Brown Act. I don't know what that capa what capacity that was in, or I mean, were you were you making those comments as a resident of Terramina? I don't, I don't know. He so. didn't say. Well, he just said you are, can't speak in front of the commission, but you can send out an email on your findings to everyone. Which well, I I'm just I don't know if that's. I will take this up. Asking. I'll take this up with Mr. Summers at my earliest. That requires a separate conversation. Yes. Thank you. Um, you know, Commissioner Convery? Yeah, I'm looking at your um, visible to the public right of way and then moving on down to page 20, uh, section 2, existing ordinance. In the case of construction of a new improvement, exterior of such improvement will not adversely affect and will be compatible with the external appearance of existing improvements on said landmark. And it doesn't say anything about visible to the public right of way. So in a way, there's a conflict. The code conflicts when you add this language of visible to the public right of way. You know, and, and any applicant can argue, you know, well, down here on page 20 it says this, and earlier it says visible to the public right of way. So I think that language should just be removed all the way around, visible to the public right of way, because it's just in conflict with all the other statements in the code. Did anybody I'm have just any asking. Comments? I'm just asking the question. You know, what What is the phrase doing? Yeah. I think I think it merits more investigation by staff and the city attorney. Um, mm -hmm. If you were to remove that language, my concern is that it means that a work permit would be involved for anything, regardless where it was and whether whether or not it was visible from the public right of way. Um, I think we need to go back and look at the state guidelines and the uh, Secretary of Interior guidelines. Okay, thank you. And then, think about, Commissioner James? Sorry, what does everyone think about what I said about adopting the criteria of the Secretary of Interior? Does anybody have a comment I on that? I think that we, that is part of our, okay. our, yeah. okay. Let's start our right. work. Nobody said anything, you just moved on to I'm that. sorry. Matthew, are you referencing the California Historical Building Codes? Because they're different than regular building codes. Oh yeah, I'm I'm familiar with the the um, the building codes and but the uh, historical building codes. I'm I'm talking about the uh, secretary's guidelines yeah. and the uh, office of historic preservation yeah. uh, guidelines, not the building code. Yeah. Okay. And my last comment is in attachment B on page one. Uh, the objectives of the proposed changes to the historic uh, sites of merit. Uh, bullet point three, add additional work permit approval requirements for work or alterations on a site of merit to ensure that historical integrity is maintained. Uh, it isn't our intention to add more requirements. It's just uh, adding one layer of review, and that is that it comes before the HPC. That's the only one that I can identify. There's a place like Sacred Tona, which is nonprofit, and they become a site of merit. If they're nonprofit, would it be possible to help them out financially on the cost of the work permit, or for the city to do that? Or is yes, and we do take those up occasionally oh, okay. with on a case by case. So I just that's a question that I have. It's just the phraseology is that 
you know, this commission is averse to adding layers of uh, fees and requirements for applicants because it's a deterrent to preservation. And so, uh, you know, the sites of merit, the notion that I thought we had with the sites of merit was that, that when a uh, permit application came in for alteration, addition, or demolition to a sites of merit, it would come before HBC. So that's one or one extra requirement. Any other commissioner comments? No, I agree with you. It should be reviewed by the commission, but not a paid permit. People just can't handle it any, you know, to pay twice. To well, those fees, we, on an annual basis, we make recommendations to council for, on fees, and so we're free to make that recommendation. Because I talked to the city of Riverside, and I was really impressed by their attitude. They really want the city to look good. And so to, as a motivation to people, they don't charge any kind of fees, but they, you know. For what? For the work permits, even. For landmarks? Landmarks, uh-huh, for okay. anybody. The only thing they charge for is to help them with their Mills Act paperwork. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's a really good attitude. So they're preservation Well, it's a friendly. financial. Yeah. It's a financial budgeting thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Akins? I do. Couple but, things. You know, Darwin, there aren't that many preservation buildings here for it to be a financial thing. You know, I think Ojai can be more preservation friendly. How many, how many historic homes are applying for permits? Really, I think it's a consideration. Well, we can, we can make that recommendation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm sorry, Commissioner Akins. Oh, uh, okay. Just to try to get some value out of my six hours this morning. Uh, on uh, attachment A, page two of 27, it's under 4-8.03. Page two of 27, attachment A. That last sentence, I'm just not <clears throat> sure when the Ventura County Cultural Heritage Board's gonna take over the o City of Ojai Historic Preservation Commission. And I'd really like that sentence struck. <laughs> That's existing ordinance. That would be struck. Can we, yeah, can we just make a recommendation that is taken out? Uh, let's see. Um, I thought we added monuments back in per Commissioner Hill. I thought we did too. I remember that. But I wasn't sure. It keeps saying, but not monuments. And I saw that. In different places, but not monuments. But I thought we added monuments back in. Uh, Last time, I think the last meeting, which Chairman McCready wasn't here. Or maybe you weren't here either. I think you've had discussion about that, but it wasn't in the context of a formal recommendation. Well, uh, I'll make that in an informal. Um, Is there a particular reference? Uh, for 4-8.05. Uh, 05? Uh-huh. Okay. And four, yeah. Let's get reprinted there. Oh, oh, that's an expansion. Uh, the, the other thing, and we mentioned it earlier when Commissioner uh, Kirk? Merck. Merck. Merck was here. Um, and I, let's see, where was it? So I can insert that. Yeah. I would like to have an input that if there's a, um, historical report done on a building that that probably means it should come before the historic P preservation commission just so we can touch it I mean, it just sounds kind of logical to me so what's the requirement for the historic report well for example 402 why, why does someone do it because they want to find out whether it's historic or not okay. so 402 blanche is what's the example the we talked about earlier Um, somebody thought it was important enough to require a historic report, right? And so because somebody thought that was a requirement, probably someone here at the city, um, to me, it's not then up to the um, person who's building the property to say, oh, no, nah, it's not. I mean, even in the discussion that uh, Commissioner Convery uh, mentioned, and I think uh, Commissioner Merck mentioned, it, it wasn't clear in that historic report one way or the other. 
I mean, it, it, hmm. it had defining elements, but it also had a very poor foundation and three inch walls, according to, the, to what I read. But again, here's a 90 year old structure that's uh, of its, its element built at that time. Not sure how it was built, but they couldn't find the thing, uh, the uh, architect. But still, it's a structure of uh, 1926, that period, that time frame, um, that's going to disappear without us even 90 years old. Going to disappear. I mean, we've had, we've had uh, things blow up in uh, the commission's face prior to when I came on. But I read the comments on buildings that are 50 years old. That buildings 50 years old should come before us. I live in a house that's. 50 years old, I don't think it should come before you in any way, shape, or form, but 90 years old. I, I think it should just be touched by the HBC. I'm, I'm, I'm not waiting on it right now. I'm just, I'm just asking that question as to um, the benefit or why would you. It's another layer um, of bureaucracy, and some people would be for that, and some people would not be for that. It's mm -hmm. Agreed, but, it, but it's it's... In, in essence, our layer of bureaucracy. So, the, so to me, the question would be, again, um, why would that individual have the review performed um, based solely on the age of the house? Or were they trying to make a determination as to is there something um, that would prevent us from doing a complete demolition and starting over? So I'm not sure why they would go in the first place other than the Both. house. Um, th that's all I'm trying to do. I'm, I'm trying to figure this out myself, guys. I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not. From, from what I was able to deter determine, and, and again, you know, Chairman McCready knows this. Um, what I, what I w it appeared to what I was uh, seeing was that uh, they came to the Planning Commission. They had no idea what was going on. It was asked of them to have a historical report prepared so that they could determine, you know, what's the building, what's the age, what's the, even who the architect is that is important for many of our buildings. And so they came back with that report. And um, so it went to the commission, the planning commission, to basically determine is it historical or not. And as you saw with Commissioner Merck, who's been around a few years, you know, they felt, uh, yeah. Yeah, they were still. Yeah, they uh, uh, recognized that the other night. Uh, he felt uncomfortable, and I know the chair felt uncomfortable in this not coming before the Historic Preservation Commission. So, Brian, it sounds like you're asking to look at that historical report and determine if there are elements in there that make this or any structure of age architecturally significant. Who is the architect? What type of windows does it have? Is it a special building that is a one of a kind? You know, all those elements. And if in this case, it, I don't think that it's applicable. I don't think it was a special building. But I think you're asking that you want to know what the elements are and what the triggers are to decide if it's architecturally or historically significant, correct? Um, yeah, to me, it's fact finding for the position yeah. that I have. I mean, it's. To, it's to a degree, the same reason we were asking for a historical report on the uh, uh, elementary school, Ohio Elementary School, because we want to know what's what what's um, what's historical and what's not. So we're not, you know, fighting over something that was built in 1950. Yeah. So maybe the significance of them uh, requesting this report was based on the architectural style, because, like you said, you live in a 50 year old track house and I live in a 55 year old track house and in four I might years be there too. it's going to be five years old if it's more like it's still standing which I'm going to assume it is <laughs> um, would someone be required to get a historical report on a 95 year old track house so I think the report was requested because it's a one of a kind and the age and they had to make someone wanted to make a determination as to what it was so I'm not saying whether it should come to you or not. I think that's something for you guys to weigh in. But for me, I'm just trying to, to mentally have that conversation. What's the significance? And I would think the significance is the architecture of it, the fact that there's very few of that style in the community. It also has to be historically you know, significant, I think, as part of the requirements of the National <coughs> Register. Well, 
part of the reason you do the report to find out if it is. But if it is. But there, was there a famous person living there? Was it a certain period in history that contributed so to the period? So I would think that if the report came in significant, that it would have automatically came to you. Mm -hmm. It and would if have. If it came in as non-significant, that it was moved to the state of planning. That's mm -hmm. what so happened. I think there might be something there already, but that's for you guys to make it. Again, and, and going to, to what you just said, who's making that determination? Because it certainly wasn't the Historic Preservation Commission. The report was making the, the determination as to the significance of it. Um, we, uh, you know, just for a little institutional history here, I mean, years ago, this commission made a recommendation to council to uh, have triggers for when buildings came before this commission, and it was you know, suggested that anything older than 50 years, and we got pretty well slapped on the hand by everyone in town, including the press. And so um, if this commission wants to make a recommendation that if uh, the director of community development uh, requests a phase one historic resources report that it also come to the planning, the HBC, then we can make that recommendation. So, um, does that bring us to our last item? Yes, um, thank you. I made, I made notes here of your comments, and uh, we will transmit those uh, to the council. I will have further discussions with the city attorney regarding those uh, specific issues uh, and with the um, community development director as well. Thank you very much. And I, uh, again, have to mention I neglected to uh, Ask for disclosure of site visits and ex parte contents. Uh, I visited the museum site. I did too. I also went to the Neff Lounge. Not that that's an issue right now, but they were still under construction when I went there. Hmm. And not construction, but remodel or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'd like to say that um, I did visit the museum also, and I also spoke with Mark Lewis. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I visited the museum. Thank you. Guess what? I had visited the museum <laughs> probably about four times a <laughs> week. So, <laughs> just so that's out there. <laughs> Mr. Winninger, uh, future agenda items? Yes, um, Mr. Chairman. Um, you do have a joint meeting scheduled with the City Council on uh, February 14th. You've previously identified some issues that you'd like uh, for that discussion. Uh, for your meeting on February 9th, uh, we are planning on bringing the um, Phase 1 Historic Resources Report for the smith Hobson House City Hall that we're in right now uh, to you. Uh, work is still progressing on the Historic Resources uh, Survey for the Ojai Grammar School. Uh, last I heard, they were still uh, reproducing some of the plans that uh, the school district was um, was furnishing so there's a chance it would be on the agenda as well but that's it may it may trail by a month or so um, I think that uh, summarizes the information um, we do uh, based on the Commission's discussion at your last meeting which the chair and vice chair were not at there was a discussion about a binder a resource mm -hmm. um, a Commission resource binder uh, staff did locate um, a version of that uh, and uh, we're in the process of updating that right now so um, um, uh, the clerical staff are working on on that as we speak I have one too <laughs> Good. Um, the intention, the intent is to update all of them and give okay. all the commissioners updated versions. Thank you. Thank yes. I will do that. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Council Member. I will do that. Uh, I think that uh, concludes our report for this evening. Thank you. Uh, commissioner comments, general comments. It was a good meeting. Thanks. Thank you. We had a lot of discussion. Council liaison. 
Councilman Haney, good to see you, oh, sir. So for Mr. Winnegar's, um, um, Wingard's, Winnegar. Winnegar. Winnegar, that's what I thought. Um, I'll wear a name tag next time. <laughs> but um, so I just had a couple comments that I wanted to make. The, um, have you guys been to the Arts Commission? No. And seen how they function? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They've, because uh, they have a large board just like yourselves, and they have done a lot of subcommittees to do some interesting things um, regarding the arts and, and the community. And I have a sense that, 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 that they're, the way they conduct themselves might be, be beneficial to you. And here's a couple ways that, that I'm looking at it is, um, <coughs> the landmark sites, do you all know where every one of them is? That's where we're getting that binder symbol. Now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when's the last time any one of you saw all of them within a given year? Don't know. And if you're responsible to, um, if this commission, not you personally, but if the commission is responsible to um, ensure the upkeep of these landmark sites, wouldn't that be a nice subcommittee being formed or some type of aspect of what you do and you can't do all of them? Maybe you do three a year, but you actually meet and greet and go and do a visit and, mm -hmm. and actually look at what we agreed to mm -hmm. and are they living up to their agreement? But so those are the, the things that I see that might be beneficial for the commission if you're willing to do that. Mm -hmm. um, because I've said for the longest time, you know, where are they? Um, what shape are they in? And we don't necessarily hear anything about them until someone's coming to either repair them, renovate them, or to, to alter them in some form. So I think that that'd be beneficial to the community. Um, I wanted to thank you guys for, for adopting the, the state standards. If I remember correctly, two years ago when I came to council, um, Brian, remember I had that conversation and one of the very first things was, what are your standards? And, and, and you said, well, we have ours and we have the states. And so having something in writing that says, this is what our guidelines are, I think is beneficial to everyone. Um, so I think that's a great thing. Um, so again, my, answer, my question is the registered properties. Um, are they kept here in City Hall? If I'm a tourist and I come to town and I wanna see one of these properties, how do I achieve that? Mm -hmm. On the website. Okay, every one of them is listed. Mm -hmm. And is there hours of operation? Do some people, <laughs> are some people more willing to allow you to come on, unnoticed or, or, or are they all drive-bys or? So those are things that, that I think should be important if, if these sites are really meaningful, meaningful to this community, then we need to make them meaningful. Yeah, the the public ones, you know, Cretona, for instance, is open to the public, but a private Libby home isn't something that you can just drive up to Ojai and say, I want to see that. You know, the Mills Act requires that the owner open the house once a year, I think, to a preservation group. Mm -hmm. That's the only, re that is the correct requirement. And so, for instance, the museum dinner that Ramin hosts and the holiday home tour fills, fulfills that requirement. But if you're living in Pasadena and you want to go to Ojai and look at And I want to see the, the Libby houses, home, yeah. and I could drive by the Libby home. You could drive by it. But I you could actually stop and park and take yeah. pictures of the Libby home. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can do From that the street. any home. But you see what I'm trying to say is, yeah. Yeah. is it'd be nice to know. Yeah. And we have, we have been in the process of updating our list and republishing it. So but hours it's a of good suggestion. Or all, the public places have the hours of operation, like right. Cretona. Right. You know. That's all I'm trying to. Say. That's all I'm trying to say is is um, <coughs> to give meaning to to the mean, to uh, to what you are doing mm -hmm. and what you guys all treasure. Um, that's all I'm trying to say is let's make these living treasures. Let's make these elements something special in our community. And I still think that um, sooner or later on this commission that we need to get an actual true cultural resource person because it is cultural and historical. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's going to be one of my recommendations to the mayor upcoming is the next vacancy is that we really look for someone with a cultural background. All right, that's all I have. And you guys did a, an excellent job tonight. Thank you. And I want to thank you for your uh, suggestion of forming an ad hoc group for visiting the sites. That's a great suggestion. Thank you. Council, thank you, Councilman Haney. Can I just raise an issue on... Uh, yes, Mr. Akins. Um, regarding the committees, when I came on a few years ago, we had a plethora of committees. 
And then we received training. And our committees died. All of them. Do you remember what training it was, cost us to, yeah, it to was, stand all of our commi functioning committees? <laughs> yeah, it was a Brown Act issue. And so, I, as I took it. Yeah. yeah and, so and, and we disbanded that, ours, and everybody else kept there. So. So we did have a bunch of different committees, and but I, I do think that uh, you know it is part of our work to uh, observe the the landmarks, and I think that's a great that's a great idea to do that. You know, maybe we do three a year and just can, yeah. Yes, we do. You know, I wonder, Councilman Hanny, and uh, again, because I already commented on the fact that the information has been now, uh, uh, much of the information has been, well, three columns, I think, uh, eliminated, uh, something that, to me, more information. But, you know, some of these things are, um, could be uh, linked, like the Ojai Valley Museum within this structure so if they went to the website and went to the Ojai Valley Museum they could link straight to the like the city does the city links you know the city's website links to the Ojai Valley Museum so that may be one way to to make the ones that could be opened up and made more living and more accessible just through that that link so I think that'd be a benefit for this commission is to actually you know, review those and find out which ones they are yeah and submit I think to No, I, th I think your suggestion was very welcome. Thank you. With that, we are adjourned. We're still on. So Matthew could not make it tonight? No, he's in Sacramento. Sacramento. Oh, that's a tough one. City. City. Oh, okay. All right, guys, stay dry. Thank you. Thank you. Are you turning us off? Just being here? Or are we shoot ourselves in the mouth? <laughs> First word. <laughs>